Hey, what's up, guys? We're going to do, um, this is actually my final video uh, with you. I'll, I'll miss you on uh, video, but probably not really because I'll see you in person. But what we're going to do is um, look at a kicking combination that we used to we used to do pretty frequently, and I remember <clears throat> having Black Belt Camp work on this quite a bit. It's front, hook, round, side. And uh, I love the uh, the balance and strengthening aspect of this just as a, as a physical drill. Um, but also to put all those kicks together to make sure that they are really distinct from one another. It's also a great technical drill. And so, you know, pretty efficient, like you're getting a lot done when you, when you work on this. I think this is great for just becoming one of those people, uh, whose, whose legs are like an extra set of hands. And if you really want to be good at Taekwondo, um, I think you want to develop that sense of just, yeah, like I can pick my leg up and put it here and put it here and just kind of do whatever I want with it. I'm in no hurry to put it down uh, because I've got great strength and, and control. So uh, let me show you how to practice this. We're going to do a whole bunch of them on both sides of the body, front hook, round, and side. All right. So first of all, get my ball set up there. Okay. All right. So first of all, you're going you're gonna to do your front kick, and you're going to do it body height. So even if you're capable of the super high front kick, don't do that. We're going we're gonna to have specific targets in mind here. We're going to go for like a belly level, ball of the foot front snap kick. Of course, my shoe's untied. Very nice. Okay, so you throw that belly level, and the reason is because this does have some good sparring application. And so... All you headhunters like to throw everything as high as you can. That's cool that you, that you can do that. You'll have a couple head kicks to throw in the combination, but the first one is belly level. So we're curling back the toes, front snap kick. High rechambers, right? So when you're throwing multiple kicks, don't, don't allow your knee to drop and raise back up again because that will throw off your balance, and it also, more importantly, it will just make everything you're doing really slow. So my front kick, the rechamber, I keep my knee high. All right, so the second kick in the combination is hook kick. So from the rechamber, from the front kick rechamber, I'm going to roll over and keeping my chamber high. Notice it's very much like a side kick chamber. When you hook kick chamber, your, your knee is up, your foot is under, and then you're going to shoot out. You're going you're to punch your foot out, but not straight. You're going to punch it out to the corner. Once your leg is straight, you're going to drag it through. You're going to rechamber it and set it down. Now, we've talked a lot about hook kick being done improperly, like the idea that somebody might reach out and then fold back and do the fold as if that's the kicking uh, motion. That fold is really, you think of that as being more of the rechamber. The kicking motion is the straight leg pull back using your glute muscles, the biggest, strongest muscles you've got to pull that thing through the target, right? If I go like this, and attempt to kick you that way, it's just hamstring. Like, think about how much you can hamstring curl versus, you know, how much you can, uh, like, you can, you can pull back with your hip. Uh, your hip's way stronger, right? So, hook kick and then round. And those two are going to be head high. Now, the angle that my camera's at, I'm, I'm throwing them actually more belly high. It might look head high to you because I'm putting it on the top of the screen. Um, but... From the hook kick here, I, I fold. That folded position after hook kick is a, a round kick chamber. So then I can just extend back out. That's a famous combination it by itself, just hook and then round. Um, I used to have a training partner named Brandon Jennings, who was uh, just a phenomenal like natural athlete. And he started to, like, he's like 16 or 17. He's got a like, grown man sized strength, super athlete guy, but still like doesn't know his own strength and he's kind of thinking of himself as a kid still so that was sort of a recipe for disaster and I remember him sparring guys guys like you know twice his age he would come in and throw a hook kick and pull your guard down with it bam and then come back with that round kick so I'm gave a few give a few dudes uh just like big bloody noses so that can that by itself hook round could be a nice combination so you got front to the body hook and round to the head and then we're going to finish up by going side kick back to the body again. All right. So here, and we throw front to the body. We rechamber high, no knee drop. We roll over, we throw hook, 
folding back into round. Now we rechamber the round kick over on this side. So if you're going to do two kicks, it doesn't make sense to rechamber as the first kick if you really have to go right into the second kick. So like for example, if I were to go round, rechamber over here, and then come this way, and then throw my side kick, I would have added a motion that's not necessary. So I'm going to go round, rechamber the round like the side, and then punch that heel right into the ribs. Okay. Now I want you to be able to visualize what's going on here. Imagine that you, you're going to throw those kicks with your right leg toward me and imagine that I'm your bad guy, all right? So you throw that right leg front kick to the body. Maybe you hit me, maybe you don't because I reach down to block. Now I've got this blind side exposed to the hook kick, which is a great, great sparring move. Develop your eye for seeing that when somebody's blind side is exposed. Hook kick's a great move back there. So you hit me here, boom, you come back this way, boom, maybe by that time as you're throwing your round kick, my guard is back up, opening up my ribs, bam, and you throw the side kick into there. So that's what you visualize when you do front, hook round high, and side back to the body. Front, hook round, and side. As far as foot position goes, you know, you've got your, um, you've got your possibly three different foot positions uh, in this drill and also possibly you stick with just two. I like to do the three different ones just to work on control of your foot. You know, for the front kick, uh, toes curl back. For the hook in the round, you could point the toes, thinking sparring style. And then for side kick, just flex the ankle and the toes back and use that, that heel. The other, alternative, alternatively, you would, you would do sort of the more default traditional uh, foot position on hook and round kick would be to flex back, just like on the side. And you go ball of the foot, and then you flex and stay flexed and stay flexed. But I think there's less skill. Uh, there's less skill involved in that. And also kind of a less, uh, less sparring application for sure uh, when you're talking about ball of the foot, uh, hook kicks, and or, or uh, hook kicks with a heel and ball of the foot, round kicks. Not, not a lot of application there for the kind of sparring we do. Um, cool. So that is a great drill. Work on that front hook, round, front low, hook round high, side low. Develop your balance, your strength, a lot of technical skills all in one drill. Happy sparring.